watch, but if you just put on like One Piece, you can just watch like 20 episodes in a shift and just all be like into One Piece. Oh my God. I love that. Good for them. Apparently, Dragon Ball Z is a big one, dude. They fucking love Dragon Ball Z. Jesus dude, they all Christ. think they're Goku out there, Super Saiyan, <laughs> fucking crushing terrorism. That's so fucking funny. Uh, I love the idea of like the people who are defending our country are watching some nerd ass shit. Dude, it's great. We have nerds protecting us. You gotta think about the person that joins the army, though. Like, I feel like back in the day, it used to be, like, some corn-fed dude in Iowa working on a farm that was like, I need to protect my country. Yeah. Or, like, I need money to go to college. But now it's, like, not that. But now I feel like it's, like, people that played too much, like, Call of Duty without, like, understanding what war actually is. Yeah. And then be like, I'm gonna be the next, like, tier one operator. <laughs> and then some, uh... I'm gonna get prestige in real yeah. life. <laughs> I'm gonna kill <laughs> a lot of people. <laughs> And then I feel like some recruiter at the mall just tricks you into being like, oh, yeah, dude, if you just sign up for the regular army, actually, you have to do, like, four years of that, and then I can get you in the Navy SEALs. And they're like, really? And they're like, yeah. And then they sign up. It's like, tricked you. You're just in the army now. Jesus. You're never going to be a Navy SEAL. No. You're going to be loading crates <laughs> into a plane for the next four years. You're never even going to touch a gun. They, but they spend – I love that their downtime is watching anime so much. Well, dude, that was my um my two friends that were in the army. Like, that was their like hugest disappointment is that they were kind of like that. Like they wanted to go like be, you know, black ops for real. Like yeah. that, that's what they thought it was going to yeah, be. Yeah. And so they signed up to be like frontline infantry or whatever. And uh, <laughs> then they just uh, one of them ended up being deployed to Germany, where all he did for like his uh, two years of like active duty deployment was just sit in like a little security guard box and like check IDs to see if you could come in and out of base. Fuck. That's all he did. He was just a security guard. And then the other one, <laughs> oh, the other no. one was deployed where somewhere in Virginia, like near DC and like one of those bases. And all he did was load crates onto tr trucks and planes. Holy he was, a, he was like a logistics guy or whatever they're called. Yeah. And him and like 20 dudes in his squad, like all they did was, we have like a hundred crates of ammo coming going to Afghanistan, boys. We gotta get on the plane in a half hour. And like the the sergeant would be all hyped and they'd be like, oh motherfucker, all right. And they just <laughs> like use a forklift. Like he's like, all my I thought I was gonna drive a fucking tank. And I just drove a forklift yeah. for eight hours a day for like four years. I wonder what they did before like the whole like liking anime and liking Call of Duty was such a, a normal thing to do in the military and the army. Like, what were they doing before that? Like, what do you think they did on their downtime? Yeah, like before in the that 60s. became a part of the culture. Yeah, uh, like what were they do? Just like look at po like porn magazines. I think yeah, probably. they like passed around like Playboys and were like check and just did and like just drink. dip. Yeah, I feel like they did a lot of dip, dip and drink, and like what talk? Yeah, just, just like, have talk? like you conversations. Me, me and Matt don't have conversations with people unless it's being monetized. This podcast <laughs> is the only time me and Matt talk. Our entire relationship is just this podcast. Uh, we're like the Mythbusters, guys. Uh, the Reddit thread's going to come <laughs> out where it's like, do you know they don't even talk to each other outside of the show? So good. So good. So cool. true. Ben is the only one who gets a uh, relationship with me and Chris off camera. Dude. Ben, Ben's the glue that holds this all together, really. Yeah. It's so true. Oh, I, I had a fun, fun experience. Uh... This this week, are you looking at my? I look oh, like that. It matches. Look at that. <laughs> Matt's geek bar out. I got the I got the new hoodie on, and um, got the Barney three thousand. I got the Barney <laughs> three thousand on. It's a good good uh, nice sweatshirt. It does look nice. The is that a, is that a new vape? The it's the same brand. It's the geek bar with the little planet on it. With the digital on but the this side. This is this is sour blue. So they somehow got the the smoke. Actually, I'm not going to smoke it. They somehow got the smoke to taste like um sour patch kids sour. How do you get the digital to turn on? Here. I'll, I'll do it. I'll figure it out. I got it. So sick. Look at that, dude. So, Dude, I can't believe this is disposable. Yeah, I just throw that away and it like That's sits so in. so dumb. It sits in the. <laughs> you think we'll get to that? Well, no, obviously we're here. Obviously we're paper. fucking here. Yo, can I say? see that? I gotta write something down. Hands up an iPad. <laughs> yeah. Damn. You think we'll ever have an energy crisis in the future? Because obviously we're gonna get to we that We have point. an energy crisis right, right now. Do you think that'll that'll turn to like us having to buy like new phones every week? And then whenever it dies, we throw it away and get a new phone because like it's how it, dude, easier to do that than, to, the than to charge it. We had We've run process. out of Energon cubes, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the tesseract when you need it? Well, my favorite thing is 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 everyone's like, "Oh, we have an energy crisis. We're running out of fossil fuels. What do we do? 
just more nuclear power plants. I know no one wants to hear this. Nuclear, we everyone's like, wh- where do we get a clean, safe, infinite source of energy? Mm-hmm. That's like a future concept. It's like, no, we've had that since the 40s. It's called nuclear fission. Um, for, some, for some reason, we got psyoped into thinking it's scary because of uh, uh, Chernobyl. But it's like if done properly and on a smaller scale, like we could have infinite clean energy for everyone. You do believe dinosaurs existed, right? Yeah. You believe like whole... That came out of nowhere, yeah. yeah. No, you said fossil fuels. You can't say fossil around me and my mind not... I got you. No, they existed like 5,000... You said PSYOP and I was thinking about dinosaurs. I wouldn't even... They existed existed around like 6,000 years ago with humans and then got killed in the Great Flood. (laughs) That's not true, right? You believe the 65 million years ago thing, right? Clearly, clearly, clearly. <laughs> we'll have a fun conversation after, but I need, I need you to, to be in reality for me one second. You do believe science when it says 65 million years ago there was fucking dinosaurs, yes? Dude, who am I going to believe? Some nerd with glasses? I know you're doing a bit right or now. A guy that, or a guy a that wrote in Cyrillic. I, and I want to have a fun conversation and have a future bit, but I need you to lock in with me real quick and, and tell everybody in the audience right now that's watching this that you know dinosaurs existed 65 million years ago. What is? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just thinking because like there's so many. I never fucking. I, I I can't understand. Like, do you like that people fucking deny dinosaurs' existence? Like re- super religious people, people who aren't even in your religion, no. that that say no, dinosaurs never never existed, and the bones that we have are tests. Yeah, God. God buried them to test you, our faith. How do you feel about that take? Here's my thing with people like that. Like, well, you can believe that. I don't really care. It's just, of all the issues in the world today, and yeah. even all the issues in religion, just any religion, all of them are working stuff out. You know, there's always something going on. Dinosaurs are the least Is that really the thing you're that. really worried about? <laughs> really? Like, <laughs> you know? Yeah. You, you know, you... <laughs> You have like people going to, to church and synagogue and, and mosque way less. You, the numbers are down. Yeah. You know, we have all these world plights and starving people in wars <laughs> that you could be helping with. And you're like, but if they believe in the dinosaur bones, <laughs> yeah. that's going to ruin their faith. And Dude, it's like, like that's the right. turning point. That's crazy. Like you, all right, you're, you're real caught up on this whole dinosaurs thing. I think you should be more worried about maybe not hitting your wife for like a week. <laughs> it's the same with like the people that get really weird about gay marriage. Yeah. Like they think it's like the worst thing on earth. And it's like, dude, there are like 613 commandments <sighs> and you're focused on like number 257. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? There's- you could also, you could inverse it. It would be funny the other way too, where it's like people are so... So like caught up. It's with, not even in the top with, ten. With gay with like gay people in church and like people are in church. They're so like hateful of gays and it's like, come on, you're not even thinking right, okay? Dinosaurs never existed. <laughs> Guys, we'll, we'll get back to the gay and abortion thing, but right now, <laughs> dinosaur. I, you know what? I take it back. Yeah. I would rather have you be concerned about the age of the earth and the dinosaur yeah. bones than be one of those assholes outside an abortion clinic or Dude, like yes. yelling at a gay wedding. Yeah. That That's a better use of your weird ignorance. Is, uh, yeah, is, is, is looking at dinosaur bones. Like, this is fucking fake. Oh no, you guys <laughs> can get married, but this shit. It's like, that's a much better use <laughs> yeah, of your time. Yeah, 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 yeah. I like that a lot. Uh. Like give give them something give them something stupid to deal with. Yeah, right. You know? So it's like I I I went full circle <laughs> on that. Actually, I support you. That museum that tries to prove. Have you seen that? That's no. a museum. No, it's somewhere in like the. Uh, it's a museum that tries to prove that dinosaurs didn't exist. No, no. So here's what. It's even better. So it's in um it's it's in Tennessee or something. Okay. Whatever state I said, it's wrong. But look it up. It's like uh so they built a life size version of uh, Noah's Ark from the flood uh, story. Okay. They built Noah's Ark according to like what the Bible said, which by the way, so dumb to do that because they're like, oh, we have the measurements because uh, it says it was this many cubits long and this many cubits uh, wide. No one knows what a cubit is. <laughs> you do this weird thing where you decided at one point what a cubit was, but yeah, nowhere yeah. in the Bible or any Bronze Age text have we ever gotten an actual measurement of what a cubit is. So you're just guessing. So the, to think you built it perfect, it that anno- that's just a nerd thing. See, that but that's me. also, that's nuts too, because back then when they were writing the Bible, didn't, didn't measurements exist at that point or no? Yeah, they had cubits. If they did, you would have... Okay, so they, they, so that was, did exist back so then. So cubits then. existed. They're in the Bible. It does reference that how Noah's not, Ark... How did we forget what a cubit was? How did all that time pass? It's only been 2,000 years. How do we not so, know what so a here, cubit is? Here, here's the thing. Imagine we fast forward like 10,000 years. Yeah. For just for argument's sake. And we, we and forgot how foots and inches work. And I come and I'm like, oh, it's three. It's a three feet. 
And you're like, how big is a foot? And I'm like, it's 12 inches. And you're like, what the fuck's an inch? Like, you know, it's just like, yeah, so yeah. even the thing I'm referencing. About that. Yeah, it's like, ah, uh, you know, like, I, so it's like, it's hard. It's all, it's all what we say. It's all words. Yeah, so know? it's like, if you lose the initial thing of like, for instance, if we had this can yeah. and we, I don't know, whatever size this can is like, this can is eight inches, right? Yeah. So, okay, now we have a physical thing. If you lose the physical thing that you use as a point of reference, well, now we have no idea what you're so fucking we talking have no, about. So, we have, like, no rulers from 2,000 years ago that have that say cubit on it? As far as I'm aware, no. If someone knows about that, send me the info. I'm a history nerd. I'd love to read about Because we have so many, like, rulers nowadays yeah. and shit. Plastic ones, metal ones, yeah, whatever the fuck. but this was back when you died that, at, like, 12. So, you, you weren't right. too concerned with making a ruler. You yeah, couldn't yeah. fucking read. No one really, no one had the foresight to be, like, people in the yeah. future are going to want to know about this. Yeah, so, 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 one of these, like, evangelical Christian people, um, I, for, I read about it. I forget how he determined what a cubit was, mm -hmm. but it's like the most pseudoscience, like shit your stone friend would say, how he figured it out. Yeah. And then the whole Christian community just decided that's what a cubit is. And it's funny because then... Dude, back then, all you had to do was speak with confidence. And you were good. Nobody no one could fact check you. you. No one checked you. You could do that up to the 80s before the internet. <laughs> no one... Dude, yeah! No, even in the... Dude, it must have been so funny. Can you imagine how I... You know how I talk to people? Yeah. And, I, and now people are like, they don't even know that I'm being dumb. They just... Sometimes they take it. And and that's wrong to do. If I existed before the eighties, I think I would have. I could have been president. You'd be yeah. You'd be president. Right I now. think I could be president. Dude, it'd be, it'd be President Lopes, dude. Now with this whole fact checking bullshit, people You're, are I'm done. People are making sure that I'm like they're checking if I'm right or not. What the fuck, dude? My, that's how my that's how all my aunts and uncles have successful businesses because they did it back and they did it early on, and all they would do is just be like, "No, I know what I'm talking about. Your roof is fucked up, and you need me." Dude, imagine even in, like, the 70s, mm -hmm. if you fucked up your life, you could just move, like, 20 miles away. Not even that far. You could you could be in the same county, yeah. and you just move to a new town 20 miles away, just lie and say you have a different name. Uh-huh. Because, like, what? You go to the DMV back then, it, it's just like, yeah, this is my name. They're like, all right, here's your license. And then that's your new name, and you just have, and you're like, oh, yeah, back in my old town, and just even make up a place. Like, I was the man. I ran a factory. And they're like, oh, well, we need someone. You know, you just have a new life. Yeah. Now yeah, they Google dude. you once, and they're like, "We saw your stand up." If you get, yeah, <laughs> we, true. we're not if gonna you hire get, you. Um, if you like have like, you're, say you're on the sex offender registry, right? Yeah, and you move away and change your name. Does the sex does the registry update, or do, do, can you live a life under a new name? No, the uh, sex offender registry. Uh, you have to go door to door and introduce yourself to all of your neighbors because they legally have to be aware they live next to a sex offender. Only for a certain amount of time, though, right? Or is that forever? I, okay, I think it depends on what you do. Oh fuck! Like you know, if you were, I think there's a difference. There is some level of difference. Twelve kids, twelve years. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, just a year. <laughs> oh my god, dude. Mm. Oh, but but yeah, the thing was that the guy that built Noah's Ark. Yes, yeah, yeah. Right? yeah. Because I think you'll love this. Mm -hmm. So you built Noah's Ark, and it's um, an anti-evolution museum. Okay. So it's like arguing that evolution's not real, and the Earth's only like whatever people that are into that say, like 7,500 years old, right? Yeah. And so the way he doesn't deny that dinosaurs existed. This is the best part. What he did, didn't say, he's like, oh, yeah, dinosaurs were definitely real, but they existed like 5,000 years ago, and they lived concurrently with humans. So then he has all these displays of like a guy on a saddle riding a T-Rex. No. Like, he literally thinks Flintstones was real. No. And there's a whole museum of that, and we should go and visit it, dude. It looks kind of sick. You can't fucking do that. And so that's his explanation. He's like, yeah, but they died in the flood because they couldn't fit on the Ark, and that's why they're not around anymore. But they were real. You don't think Noah thought to maybe make the Ark big enough for the dinosaurs? Well, I would love to ask that guy what Noah's reasoning was for not making the Ark big enough for the dinosaurs. You know what? I didn't get to that part in the YouTube video but with the advertisement for it. But maybe we got to go and find out. We got to ask. Yes, we got to find out. Because it wouldn't just be like, okay, every big creature that we know is the dinosaur. Because there were also small dinosaurs. Because they, they were also small dinosaurs. They also let in and lizards, too, though. That's the thing. So 100%. it's like, why did they get in, but not the big ones? Exactly. How did you differentiate oh, so between, a gecko a lizard, cool? between a lizard and a fucking dinosaur? Uh. Also, they're the, if they're the same thing, if they had chickens on the ark, do you know the history of chickens? Because chickens are dinosaurs. Yeah. So it's like, this, I wanted to ask this man so many fucking questions. I feel like I'd, I'd, I'd beat his ass with words. I would love if you talked to him and you were, he's like, no, he was right. <laughs> like, well, you are. No, dude, I talked to him. It makes sense, actually. It makes sense, dude. <laughs> I wish I was back 7,000 years ago riding a T Rex, dude. I was born in the wrong time. Dude. <laughs>
But that guy probably just speaks with so much confidence. You he know? did seem confident as fuck. <laughs> in the, that everybody just around him was like, okay. You know, that, that's true. He had a collared shirt on that was buttoned all the way up, which is always my, like, this guy's probably knows more than me. You know? <laughs> like, I can't argue with it. He got a collar. Can you imagine what people... What people must have thought dinosaurs were before the Jurassic first Jurassic Park movie came out. Like, how they... That's why I think that movie is so fucking cool. No one's ever... No one's ever, I think, thought about what dinosaurs like would look like in like for in real life before that movie came out. That movie really put made the visuals up. It was it hold the visuals hold up too. Like cuz it's like 90s CGI, you'd think it would suck, but it it's honestly oh, it's better than a lot good. of modern CGI. It's so good. But it's like what video like there was nowadays Apple TV will put out a dinosaur documentary every year. You know, do you, do that? dude? Yeah, all the time. It's so cool. That's why you're an Apple boy. Dude. <laughs> That's why I have Apple TV, and uh, <laughs> it'll be like called like Walking with Dinosaurs or like Prehistoric Playhouse. I don't know, whatever the fuck. And it's like, um, it's just like them talking about it. But back then, before the first Jurassic Park movie, they had none of that. You know, we know so much about this fucking thing, and we get videos about it all the time. Did you know that there was a movie called The Lost World that came out way before the Jurassic Park movies did? And is it a similar concept? or? Yeah, it's a silent film. It came out in 1925. It's about dinosaurs? Yeah, there was tons of dinosaur movies before. Oh, I, well, yeah, I guess because Godzilla was also a thing, even though Godzilla never existed. But Take like, it from a man who won't watch a movie before 1995. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Conveniently, the first year I, I, I started watching Chris's, movies, dinosaur movies. I saw Chris's <laughs> eyes. I saw Chris's eyes when I was saying the, the first dinosaur movie ever was Jurassic Park, and he's just like... Nah, I, he, he's, he's just like letting me talk. <laughs> Motherfucker, you remember Land Before Time? Yeah, yeah but it's a cartoon, you know? I'm, I'm saying like, but then I remember, no, because I remember seeing like old Godzilla. Old Godzilla shit was like, like they weren't made to, it was made to look kind of realistic, but it, you knew it was a monster movie, you know, shit like that. Um, what's The Lost World? Isn't that the second Jurassic Park movie? No, I'm pretty sure. Well, yeah, but The Lost World. <laughs> It's a book. Checkmate, Ben. All basing Checkmate, these Ben. Books. Ben, just admit you lost. The it's the second Jurassic no, I'm not, Park. I'm not movie. arguing. I'm asking. <laughs> the Lost World is a movie that came out in 1925, and the Jurassic Park took their own liberties and also made their version of the Lost World. Oh, that's sick. Yeah, which that's is sick as fuck. way better. Not doubting that. You think Jurassic mm, Park is way better? What do you think? So, so, but you think Michael Crichton was probably inspired by Lost World? Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, hundred percent. Sick, dude. Here's here's my only thing sick. I will say that you might not like. When it comes to dinosaurs. Okay, go ahead. So they're totally real. They're cool as fuck. But like. 65 million years ago. If you look into. Eh, <laughs> <laughs> the guy in the ark got some good. That's what gets me mad. That's what gets me let's, mad. Hey. The guy yeah, in the ark no. makes some good points. How do you believe in science? You don't. You don't believe in science. All right, that's fine. Go ahead. Whatever. What else? Dude, science is just people not giving God credit. They're just like, oh, I'm so smart. I'm going to figure this out. And then 20 years later, it's always proven that they were wrong with new science. Anyway. Uh. But <laughs> it's not true. But um, it's not. Go ahead. Go ahead. So uh, when you look at like, because I took an archaeology course in uh, college. Shouts out Q's, Syracuse University. Go Orange. Um, it was a great class. But then you look into more of like what the archaeology or, uh, or sorry, paleontology is for dinosaurs, right? Yeah. Whatever the one is for dinosaurs. Paleontology. Um, when you get more into it, it's like they'll find like 10% of a dinosaur skeleton. So that proves that dinosaur is real, right? But then they're like, and this is exactly what it looked like. And I'm like, you have its like forearm and one claw. What do you mean not that you know that's what it fucking that's looks not like? True. No, for some of them, they have more. But there's a lot of them. You're they're taking some things. wild liberties. You're doing what I do and you're just saying things. This is true. How do you know it's true? Because we read about it. You read that that's what they would do. Not with all dinosaurs, but with a lot of them, they're just like, yeah, we have this one claw, but like, here's what it looks like. And of course, it'd be a little hyperbolic with the one claw. There's no way they would know how it looks. That's what I'm saying. So they're just taking that, wild liberties. I don't believe you. They're taking wild liberties, I'm telling you. I don't, <laughs> but can't you... But nowadays, now that we have like the full dinosaur skeletons like discovered... On those ones, yeah. When it's like 80, 90% done, I'm like, okay, you're missing a couple ribs. That That is probably what it looked like, right? Yeah, yeah, Who yeah. knows if it was actually that color, if it had feathers, whatever. Sure, We're figuring sure. all that out. But generally, we have an idea of what the skeleton was. Yes. But there are genuinely, you look it up, there are genuinely ones that they have like a leg bone. And they're like, <laughs> look what I reconstructed. Because you can tell the tension <laughs> on where the knee would have went. And that's how we water. That's how we know what its skull <laughs> looks like from the tension on the yes. knee. And I'm like... 
bro, you're taking some wild leaps to try to be a famous paleontologist. That's okay. You know, if that's happening. That's you're trying to up. clout yourself. But up. Also, I can understand that. Like, say, uh, say, uh, say, uh, um, they're doing their best. Say you have like a, a like a piece of vertebrae, right? And that vertebrae. You know it's old as fuck, but it's really similar to a vertebrae that exists on an animal that's alive today. You would then c- construct that dinosaur to be similar to or have a similar. No, you I can get, make inferences yeah. about what that dinosaur might look like. Yeah, no, and I because get of that. the because of the piece of bone that it has. You know the size of it, that where that bone would be placed on its body and shit like that, where it's located in the world next to other dinosaurs that they've they found. No, a hundred percent. Just like the supreme confidence they come up with these <laughs> yeah, sketches yeah, yeah, is yeah. like, I don't know. All right. Maybe, yeah. you know, maybe you nailed it, but, you know, let's be more a little bit more upfront with the evidence we have we're working with for this fucking sketch, you know? Yeah. Like the T-Rex, we got like almost full T-Rexes. I'm pretty confident that that's what they look like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but, dude, oh, I had a, I had a funny experience this, this week. Okay. Because we were talking, me and Matt were talking earlier about how, um, before the pod started, that if you know me in person... Mm-hmm. Um, you have a very different idea of who I am. Yeah, I'll, I'll you, explain it real yeah. quick. You have Chris has like a. I was just saying how me and Ben have like access to a certain level of Chris, and like so do you guys in a in a way. If you sat and watched all the episodes of this podcast, you get you get gists of Chris. Yeah, the real me peeks out every once. That's in a while. like that's like he's like he's kind and shit like that. But Chris's comedy is uh, not that. And if you don't know who Chris is and you're and you watch his comedy, you can very well be put off by who he is as a person. You can make. Inferences, and you'd be like, all right, this guy is not for me or whatever the fuck. Here are the levels to Chris, right? That's at surface level when you first meet him, he's he's really nice to you, right? You don't know he does comedy, but he's a really nice guy, right? You find out about his comedy, you do not like him anymore. <laughs> you hate Chris. You think he's you think he's se- uh, sexist. <laughs> you think he's racist. All that shit, right? Then you look past that and you realize that he's joking and uh-huh. all that. If you can find that that those jokes are funny because he, you know he's doing it ironically, now you have access to real good Chris, <laughs> a real real good Chris that's just like service level Chris like fucking like he's kind and shit but he cares way more about you it's deep and it's like it's so much deeper and it's 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 our favorite version of Chris it's the best version of Chris and I'll never let it appear on stage <laughs> cause I'm scared of being vulnerable no but also um, the random crowds full of random people don't deserve to get yeah all of that love like that you know they came uh, to see a show. They don't give a fuck about how you like how you feel about them individually. <laughs> they don't want to be like, I want this man to be a part of my life forever. They they bought a ticket to see you entertain them, you know? But so, so those are the levels of Chris. Thank you. I appreciate that. Man. <laughs> People need to know. But um so going with that, right? So uh, we've mentioned my cousin on this podcast before. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. And I, he listens to most of the episodes. So if you're listening, shouts out, cousin. Yeah. Um so he I did a show, um, I headlined a show in Norwalk this Thursday. Okay. And so he randomly will just, he lives in Norwalk. So he'll pop in a lot of times when I'm in Norwalk, he'll see on my store and be like, oh, I'm going to go see my cousin. Hell yeah. So, but this, and it's always a great time. This time though, he comes with his, his girlfriend Mm -hmm. who seemed very nice. Right. But they come in and, um, I keep like, I'm looking at the crowd that I keep looking over at them. And I see her getting more and more upset and him getting more and more like, oh, no, no, oh no. this was a bad idea. Oh, you know, that look in the face. And and afterwards, because we had a very, when I was like, oh, so nice to meet you. Yeah, I'm his cousin. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, know, you guys are so lucky together. You know, and all true stuff. I was like, we're very happy. Yeah, they seem like course. a wonderful couple. And then it's like, all right, I'm going to go on stage. I'm like, I can't wait. And then it's like, <laughs> you know, what I do on stage, uh-huh. and she's just like, <laughs> at the end, she was like, she was like, <laughs> just fucking the most shocked. Like, yeah. So, uh, great, great meeting you. Fuck. And my cousin's like, Ruined. yeah, he'll be at Thanksgiving. She's like, great. No, that's <laughs> uh, yeah. I'll, to I'll see you in a week. That's great. And <laughs> so I'm just like, Fuck. so I was like, ooh, all right. Oh, I got, no. I got. So to to my cousin, I'm very sorry if I caused any problems for you. <laughs> you seem like a wonderful couple, and uh, I love you both very much. I just don't get it. Thank you so much for watching this week's episode of You Should Be Worried. You are watching this on a Thursday now, which means we've changed from uploading on Wednesdays to Thursdays. So make sure you check back every Thursday for a new episode of You Should Be Worried. My name is Matt Lopes. You can find me everywhere at Matt Lopes. Um, and then also... Um, 
follow Chris Warren comedy on social media, follow uh, Ben Kirsch, uh, Benny Boy underscore 28, follow In the Making ITM on all social media platforms for funny sketches, follow the podcast, uh, You Should Be Worried Pod on Instagram, follow the, uh, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel and you leave a comment on this video, leave a, fu- leave a comment, leave a comment right now, I'll give you five seconds, and then I'll, when you're done leaving the comment, you just hit the little like button and then you say goodbye, and then you go back and you watch some of our other podcasts, and you rewatch them because, ooh, the times never stop being good. Yeah, just honestly mute your computer every night and play a playlist of all our episodes while you yeah. sleep. That would really help us yes, out. Yes, dude. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for doing that retroactively. Or Is that what the right word is? Yeah, or, no, okay, you know. Cool. And we'll see you guys next week. My name is Matt Lopes. My name is Chris Warren. All right. <laughs> <laughs>